Okay, what we're going to do today is uh, graph a polynomial function. I am looking at number 52 on page 313 in the text. What it's asking me to do is use the leading coefficient test to determine the graph's end behavior, find the x-intercepts, find out whether the graph crosses the x-axis at those intercepts or just touches. And then it's asking me to find the y-intercept, determine whether it has y-axis symmetry, origin symmetry, or no symmetry, and then also find a few additional points um, in order to graph the function. Okay. The first thing I want to do is I want to get it into a little bit better form, so I'm going to take f of x here and get my leading coefficient out front there. Okay. Now just looking at it, okay, I have an odd, uh, I'm an odd power up here, and then I have a negative leading coefficient. My leading coefficient is negative one. So what that means is just by looking at it, okay, I have a graph that rises as I go to the left and falls as I go to the right. So it's going to look something like that, okay? The end behavior on the left is that it's rising. The end behavior on the right is that it's falling, okay? So now what I want to do, what it asks me to do is find the x-intercepts. In order to find x-intercepts, I'm just going to set this function equal to zero, okay? So now I've got zero equals minus x to the fifth minus x cubed plus 6x. Okay, now what I want to do is I'm going to factor out a negative x from here, okay? So I'm going to go negative x. I've got uh, x to the fourth plus x squared minus 6, right? This is a minus 6 because I factored out a negative x. If I took a negative x times a negative 6, I get a positive 6x. And what I've got inside the parentheses here looks like the product of two binomials. So I'm just going to go minus x, and it looks like I've got x squared, let's see, multiplies to minus 6, adds to plus 1. I'm going to go plus 3 minus 2, right? So if I were to FOIL this out, I get, sure enough, I get an x to the fourth, I get a plus 3x, plus 3x squared, minus 2x squared, that's going to leave me with a regular x squared, and then a minus 6. So I'm good. So I set that equal to 0. Now I've got each individual component, and I can set each one to 0. Now since I'm looking for uh, real zeros, I'm looking for x-axis intercepts, I know I've got one at x equals 0, right? So my x-intercepts are going to be x equals 0. And then this is an imaginary one, right? And we said imaginary zeros do not actually cross the x-axis on the graph. And then over here I've got square root 2 and negative square root 2. Because I could, could put both of those in for x and that would be 0. Okay, So these are where I cross the x-axis. Now what I want to know is do I go straight through it or do I touch it and go back? And what we talk about when we when we talk about that we're looking for um, even or odd multiplicity. Now this is a first power and that's a first power. Those are odd. When they're odd, it's going to cross through the x-axis. So this one crosses through, this one crosses through, and this one crosses through. Okay. So my x-intercepts all cross through. Okay. So now I've got those figured out. I'm going to try to find out my y-intercept. When I figure out the y-intercept, all when you figure out the y-intercept, all you do is uh, evaluate the function at x equals zero. So we're going to erase all that. Okay. So I'm going to go f of zero equals what I get six times zero minus zero cubed minus zero to the fifth f of zero is equal to zero. Okay. So that means my y-intercept is it is zero. So I have an x-intercept of 0, a y-intercept of 0, that means I'm going through the origin, okay? Okay, so now I know I'm going through the origin. Let's see, determine whether the graph has y-axis symmetry, origin symmetry, or neither. So the first thing I'm going to do is, because I suspect we have origin symmetry, if you have origin symmetry, that means the negative f of x is equal to the f of negative x, right? So let's see, I would have, if I had f of negative x, that would be negative 6x plus x cubed plus x to the fifth. And if I were to just take the negative of this entire function, distribute a negative in there, I'd have negative 6x plus x cubed plus x to the fifth. So yes, I have symmetry about the origin, okay? So that was the test. 
And then let's see. So let's try to figure out what we've... Okay, now to graph it, I'm just going to use what I know about the graph and I'm going to put it on here. Okay, so I've got some axes here. Okay, now I know I passed through the origin. I know I pass right here at negative square root 2 and over here at positive square root 2. I know uh, over here at the end I'm coming up, right? That's my end behavior. I rise to the left and I fall to the right. So I know that about my end behaviors. Okay. So now in order to work this out, right, I have to turn around somewhere around here, right? And then I have to turn around somewhere up here in order to make this continuous. And then I'm going to go through the x-axis like that. I'm going to go through the origin like that. Okay, so what I'm going to do in order to do that, looks like I'm going to turn around right about here at about minus 1 and positive 1. Again, the more specific I want to get with that, the more points I would plug in to figure out more exact values. So we're just going to plug in negative 1 and I get um, 6 times negative 1 minus negative 1 cubed, which is negative 1, minus negative 1 to the fifth. So this looks like it's minus 4. So... I'm going to turn around right here at 1 minus 4. Okay. And so we are going to do like that. And then if I've got symmetry about the origin, when I plug in 1, it should come out to be 4. So I got 6 times 1 minus 1 to the third minus 1 to the, to the fifth. Sure enough, that gives me positive 4. So I'm going to turn around up here at positive 4. And that's what my function looks like, okay? Again, I'm falling to the right down here towards the end. Go through those points. And then I'm rising to the left.